it's quite a long plaza and it stretches all the way from Gyeongbokgung Palace all the way down to the Chongqichon stream down at the southern end. Today I'm introducing you to Gwangwamun Square. It's another one of my favorite locations and landmarks to visit here in Seoul. It's a place that holds a lot of significance for Korean history. It's a landmark that essentially represents Korean national identity in the same way that perhaps Trafalgar Square is a particularly important location or landmark in London, England and Tiananmen Square in Beijing in China. is the southern gate and main gate to the Gyeongbokgung Palace. In 1392, King Taejong founded a country called Joseon. He transferred his capital to Hanyang and there he built his palace called Gyeongbokgung. Construction was completed three years later. This is the central arch directly behind me and it's interesting that it's been sectioned off here. This is the path or the arch through which only the king would pass. His subjects would pass on either side of the gate. This monument directly behind me is called a Hechi. It's a guardian of this particular palace, Gyeongbokgung. They are mythical creatures that provide protection from natural elements. Gwangwamun Gate opened onto Yokjogori, which housed royal administration buildings. For centuries, Gwangwamun Gwangjang, or square, had been a public road, and by the 20th century, it was a 16-lane roadway. It became notorious as the location with the worst traffic congestion. Reconstruction of the plaza was scheduled to begin in February 2008 and it was part of Seoul city plans to introduce environmentally friendly renovation projects. Construction was delayed though due to opposition from the National Police Agency. There's actually a truck that's circumvating the square, like playing political songs. It sounds like national songs from, I don't know, like the 1940s or something. They were concerned that this area would be used and abused as a location to do mass political protests. This place is always full of political demonstration. The renovation project took about 15 months. It reduced the roads from 16 lanes to 10 and it cost about 44.5 billion won. Two months after opening, a 20-ton bronze statue of King Sejong arrived. So the interesting story about King Sejong's statue was in fact, the planners had intended to take the statue that's located at Doksogung Palace and put that particular statue of King Sejong here. <laughs> after some negotiations, it was decided that they would build a brand new statue, a bronze statue of King Sejong seated. And it was put into the plaza about two months after Gwangwamun had been renovated and restructured. But interestingly, it was the design of students. One of the students 
that had entered a competition that their particular design was picked and that was the creation of the statue of King Sejong seated that you see here today. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. have upset the public here. Demonstrations to voice how they feel about those situations and what needs to change. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just wandered inside the seawall ferry disaster permanent tent that's been set up here. I was informed actually that I could go down one of the aisles but the aisle that had all the photos of all the children that had died in the disaster, I couldn't actually bring my camera. It's interesting that they've actually made this into a permanent establishment here at Grand Wamun as a kind of way to gain signatures from people that pass through to show their support for making changes. If you know more about what the purpose of this particular tent is, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to find out more about what it is exactly that local Koreans here are actioning for. This area here in summertime has fountains that sprout out of the ground and kids love playing in this area. This is called the 1223 fountain. And it's interesting because Korean landmarks often have a lot of symbology intertwined and this 1223 fountain actually represents the 12 warships that Admiral Lee Sun Shin used to fight 23 battles against the Japanese that were invading Korea. And interestingly, he never lost a single battle. He won all 23 battles. And so he's become something of a national hero for Koreans. And he is about 250 feet behind King Sejong, right here in the center of the plaza at Gwangwamun. Today, the plaza is used for many different fun activities, including the starting location for the Seoul International Marathon, and recording scenes from a television drama series. Well, there's food festivals that have been put on yearly and they are administered by the embassies that are surrounding the periphery of Gwangwamun Square. People featuring their international food and uh, just little activities that you can do but just right here on this plaza itself. this video. I'll be coming to you again soon from a different location here in Seoul. Little by little I'm going to get to know all of the brilliant landmarks here and also the not so famous ones. <laughs>